In the last video, I couldn't plant a T on my second hole because APCD said it was out of range. Well, APCD was the one that defined the hole path in the first place, so <laughs> I'm not taking all the blame. So we'll go to hole two, and what we'll find is that APCD has allowed me to create a hole path for this par three that's around about 265 yards well it only actually allows 250 for a par 3 so what can we do well there's two options uh, the first is the simplest and that's to trick the APCD into thinking the hole is shorter than it is uh, so to do this we can move these points that mark out the hole and make them shorter so if I go to move and we untick the lock T center and lock green center positions if I just move the green forwards now you'll notice it isn't actually moving oh it's jumped you get sometimes you have to jiggle it around a little to get it to move it's moved now forwards it actually won't let me go back to where it was because it's now decided it is only going to allow 250 yards uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it at 250 and let go there so now it's thinking the holes 250 yards to the center of the green so it will now allow me to plant a T I go to planting T and there we go I can plant a T now now, there are a couple of problems with this. The first is the computer players follow the whole path and because this point is what they aim at, it may cause some problems uh, for the computer players playing the path three. So if I was using this method, I would rather have the T position forward than the green position so if I hold shift and select the other point I can move both of these there we go it's sticking to the edge of the green and jiggle it a bit and I'll have that back in the center of the green so the computer players will aim at the the whole path they should be aiming at the pin but whether they actually uh, do on a tee shot on a par 3 I just don't know really so having this forwards I've found no problems with computer players teeing off uh, when the when the put point is just in front of the tee the other problem though with this method is the scorecard will still think the hole is 250 so if I'd have moved that even shorter it would think it was that distance so if you're worried about your scorecard looking correct uh, this isn't the option to take when you're playing the game it's not a problem that you'll still be able to have the correct distances it will still tell you the distance from the T to the pin when you're playing the game it will say 278 or whatever it is to that specific pin but on the scorecard it's going to say 250 for the hole uh, another problem with these maximum lengths which you'll probably find on some of your holes if you've made a long par 4 or a long par 5 or is when you come to plant in the pins you'll have the same problem uh, it will only allow a pin to be planted from the maximum distance from the T uh, to where you're planting it so in this case because we've made this line as long as it can be it won't actually allow us to plant pins on this half of the green so if I go to planting pin it's not going to allow me to put one on the back of the green because it's out of the range of the hole uh, it will allow me a short pin but not a long one uh, and I'll be able to plant pins up to wherever that mark was somewhere around here but not there so let's undo 
So to get around this problem, exactly the same thing, go to your plan, select both the points and move them this time past the back of the green. Again, I'm having to jiggle it a bit to get it to follow. So if I now let go there, it'll allow me to plant pins all the way to the back of the green. Not a problem. Let's undo those. And as soon as we've planted the pins, just go back to plan and we've got both of those selected. And just move it back to the center of the green. Now, this won't cause any problems really. Uh, so that's a fine method to use. Like I say, with the T, it's going to affect your scorecard, so you might not want to adopt this method. The second method, which is a bit, a bit more work, is to actually alter our hole. So we need to move the T uh, forwards or the green shorter so I'm going to move the T for now so I need to move the, this T in this direction so I'm going to have to go to terrain verts and select uh, the verts to move now if I'm going to move this quite away I want to delete any verts uh, that are short in the direction that I'm going to move because if there's a vert in the way I'm going to as I move it the edges are going to end up crossing over other edges which is a no-no so I think I can probably get away with moving it uh, one area we're about 30 yards each of these edges so if I make my T 30 yards shorter it should be easily in range so I'm not going to have to move anything for now so I just select the verts that I want to move uh, I'll just put the line of sight over so we can see in the other camera maybe make the window a bit more equal so as I move it I'm going to move it horizontally uh, obviously this hill I move those verts it's going to become more of a steep cliff so afterwards I'm going to have to adjust uh, the points and also this is the end of the hill so if I move this across to, to make it look natural with the hills that have been created I'm obviously going to have to also move it down a little bit because the ground shorter is a lot lower so I shall move these points now and you just have to keep an eye on all the edges as you move it you'll see this point here this edge is nearly crossing now that uh, vert so I need to go to edge and turn this hope it will turn if it wouldn't obviously I'd have to go in and check why and move some verts until I could move it and this vert here this edge is uh, a little tight as well so I'm going to move that now go back to verts and this is soon gonna get stretched down there so I may want to turn that one I will just turn that one as well if it turns yeah and that one if we keep them all facing forwards this one won't turn so that's gonna be a problem it's gonna stop me moving it any further forwards uh, than the distance between the vert and the edge so hopefully it'll be enough if it isn't I'm gonna have to sort that edge out I can just pick up that vert and move that across as well that will sort the problem out so I might just do that actually let's just drag it over there a bit more and I'll have to reselect my verts now So now I'll be able to move this a bit further. And again, this vert's getting a bit near, so maybe just shift it 
forwards and this one forwards. But I'm going to have to check all these verts around once I've made my movement. And you'll see what I meant about the... It's got a lot steeper now, the cliff edge and the flat top. So I shall move all my verts down to compensate for the fact that they've moved forwards. Don't want these ones. Not worried about that one. I'm not worried about that one because that's at the top of the hill anyway. Just the ones I've been moving. So if I move on this screen because it's set to the z-axis, I can I can move these down. So I'll just pull my t down a little. And these verts down the bottom here that are now a cliff edge. I could just raise those up to make a more natural hill. And the same with these ones. So it's just a matter of reshaping your land to suit the new position of your tee. But we've now got a tee that's in a, a legal distance for the APCD.